So I came to Kiel because it was really important to me to try to reach out for uh, to scientific researchers. Um, I founded a just social justice project for miners. My father was uh, exposed to this respirable aluminum dust when he worked as a miner. Um, miners from about 1943 to about 1980, uh, they were exposed to this respirable aluminum dust. It was this unproven theory that this was going to prevent silicosis. So before they went underground every day, they had to sit in the the mining dry where they changed their clothes uh, for about 10-15 minutes prior to each work shift and they had to inhale this big toxic cloud of aluminum dust. Um, it was put into compressed airlines and it would shoot out in this big fog and they were encouraged to breathe it in, they were told to breathe it in um, under threat of job loss if they did not. Um, so my dad developed Parkinson's and I wondered if his aluminum dust exposure was related to the Parkinson's. Uh, but unfortunately in uh, in Ontario, Canada, where I'm from, the there's the, the work main the workplace compensation board, uh, workplace safety and insurance board, has a uh, policy that says that aluminum does not occupational aluminum exposure does not cause neurological disorders. So um, they said that the available scientific and medical information uh, didn't support that at this point, but they also weren't looking at any new scientific information. So I thought, well, that's not okay. <laughs> um, and I created a voluntary registry so that I thought my dad can't be the only one. And I um, sort of put it out there publicly. If you were exposed to this aluminum dust, um, please contact me or if you're the uh, surviving family members of that and let me know if you've had any kind of health issues. So I started that, I went public in April of 2015. Um, I currently have uh, 356 names on that voluntary registry. Uh, and it generally runs about two thirds have respiratory type of issues, difficulty with breathing, lung cancers, uh, silicosis, um, different things like that. And about a third of them have neurological. There's tons of cancers, there's tons of weird things that I don't understand. Um, and I didn't know how to uh, get that to other researchers. So I came here to the Kiel meeting and uh, they were so gracious that the scientists and researchers here, they're so um, incredible at what they do and they're, they're doing groundbreaking work. Unfortunately, um, in this kind of a situation, when you have an industrial disease, there's very powerful companies, uh, mining, the mining industry, the aluminum industry, um, that can quickly shut down what you try to do with research efforts. Um, so we, I thought if we came here and made it more international, um, then I might be able to reach people who weren't exposed uh, or aren't under the same restrictions uh, that you would get with some of these pressures uh, internally in, in, in Canada. So, uh, so there's researchers from all over the world in places where this was used, like Mexico, the United States, Canada, Western Australia, people are here and, and this dust was used there. And um, this is going to allow us to follow up with some of those miners and, um, and reach, uh, reach them in a different way than we've been able to do so far. So I'm so grateful to be here. Thank you.